Hey guys, even here, so 2023 Orlando Pro did a robbery occur at this show. If you guys follow me, you follow this channel, you probably know that I rarely ever say stuff like that. I mostly agree with the judge's decision, but this one, I just really can't make sense of it. I just don't see how the hell could this have happened. Now, there was no live stream. We got some footage, we got some photos, none of it is great, super high quality, but yeah, you're gonna get the idea, basically, like, yeah, it's not the same, it's always definitely better to be there in person, but most of the times you can kind of get the idea, you can see what is actually happening, you can see, like, glaring weaknesses, you can see uh, glaring strong points, you can see what is going on, basically, and, like, th these two physiques are completely different, totally different, uh, we're gonna analyze this this show, this actually call out, the, the, the first call out, these two guys, and we're gonna try to understand what really happened here, but again, I don't see how Phil Klahar managed to pull a win at this show. This guy is about to compete at the Masters Olympia, he's around 50 years of age, so he's definitely not the freshest looking uh, bodybuilder here. He has some other flaws, we're gonna go over these physiques, we're gonna analyze them, so let's start, let's go with the front double bicep pose. The quality of this photo is definitely better than the quality of the videos that I got, uh, but the angle is not exactly perfect, it's definitely in favor of Hassan, however you can still see what is happening uh, quite a bit. So first of all, front double bicep is kind of a pose where you really can't hide any of your weaknesses. I mean, I hate this pose personally because I have some <laughs> weaknesses like my arms, my biceps in particular, and in the front double I can't really hide much. If you have flat chest, you're gonna show it here. If you have weak arms, you can't hide them, you can't press them against your body and make them look bigger. Whatever you do, you're gonna show your entire front body in this pose and all of your weaknesses will be uh, shown in this one. So we can see exactly what is going on here. As far as Hassan, like, uh, aside from the structure, there aren't many weak points as far as muscularity. Like, he has pretty big arms, he has pretty good chest, he has developed abs, he has good lats, uh, he has big, big quads. Uh, as far as structure, once again, he's a little bit narrow upstairs, but his weakest link uh, at this show, and just basically overall in his career, is his conditioning. He definitely did not bring it at this show. It's arguably worse than it was at Toronto where he lost to Ian, and I think Ian was far better than Phil Klahar. So, I mean, everybody was saying that, uh, that Hassan was robbed at that show, and I don't think that many people are saying that about this show, even though uh, Ian Balier is a far better bodybuilder than Phil Klahar, but, you know, I think it's because Ian just has so many haters. Anyways, in the front double, once again, you can see clearly that conditioning on Hassan is horrible, especially in the legs. And whatever him and Chad are doing, it's not working. I don't know why Hassan switched coaches. He used to work with AJ Sims, the cement factory, and he got him shredded a couple of times. You know, the question is how he got him there. How hard was the diet? Maybe he was really suffering too, too bad and he didn't want to do it again. So he went with somebody who is not going to torture him as much. Somebody who is kind of known for working with uh, uh, mass freaks. And that's Chad Nichols. And I think Chad is kind of used to working with really genetically gifted guys like Ronnie Coleman, like Flex Wheeler, like Nasser El Sambadi. Uh, like these guys were super big, but they could get conditioned. So Chad knew how to get them big and full and if they can get conditioned easily, good. But when somebody is having trouble getting conditioned, like these Egyptians, like Hassan, like Big Ramy, that's when Chad is really not doing well. Also, Chad is getting gold. I think he's losing his edge. I don't think he's as sharp as he was back in the 90s. Uh, whatever he's doing with his clients lately, it's not good. It's definitely not good. I mean, Big Ramy completely lost it. Lost it all the way with Chad Nichols. William Bonac, he, he's done basically with Chad Nichols. Now Hassan is failing show after show. So I don't think Chad Nichols is in the conversation of being one of the best coaches today. He used to be, back in the day of course, he created the best bodybuilder of all time, Ronnie Coleman. And so many other great bodybuilders, but no, not, not these days. So as you can see, Hassan, once again, not good conditioning. Uh, I can see him being punished for that, but... 
losing against Phil Klahar. I don't see that, man. Now here you can see, even though it's under a, a bad angle, you can see what is going on with his stomach, for example. That midsection is just looking bad. It's just not looking good. It's looking horrible. Uh, don't mind me saying. I gotta be honest. I gotta be frank. Like the midsection is looking really bad, really bad, and that's something that should be sanctioned right away. That's something he should really get a lot of negative points for. And it is a standard uh, that the judges were holding up to for for a, quite a while now. Everybody who would bring this kind of looking midsection. This reminds me a lot of Phil, Phil Heath's midsection. Everybody who would bring something like this, they would be punished right away. Now, over here in European IFBB, where I compete, when somebody comes with a gut, for example, or gyno, or something, or like a big tear, something that is like really tr throwing off the entire balance of the physique, those guys would be just sanctioned right away, like they would definitely get punished. Uh, maybe they could like get up to second spot if everything else is just far superior, but they would never win. They would never be allowed to win. And I think that should be the case in IVB Pro League as well. Like with this kind of bubble, it's not a bubble gut really, but with this kind of messed up midsection, Phil Klahar should not have been allowed to win this show. Then we come to the legs. Uh, definitely not his strongest point, definitely his weakest point, which is usual, which is normal for these older guys. Like, with age, your limbs start, start to fall short. His arms are still holding on, but the legs are melted, basically. Not just with the size, but also like with the shape, the lines are completely blurred. Uh, it looks asymmetrical. Yeah, Hassan is not in condition, so he's... Uh, quads are also blurred, but at least they look symmetrical, you, you can see the vascularity, you can see that like they're fresh, they're just fat or watery, and Phil Klehar's legs are looking like a mess, so those two things are really throwing me off, and I would love to have seen Phil Klehar getting sanctioned for this, I really thought when I was watching um, a Stanimal, actually had a live stream on his IG, uh, even though there was no official live stream, I was watching it and I was sure that Phil Klehar is not gonna win this show, but Apparently, I was wrong, obviously. I don't know how the hell this happened, but it is what it is. And uh, yeah, by the way, Stanimal got third, which is a huge success for him, for somebody who competed in men's physique, then in classic and 212 as well. Uh, now placing third in a pro show, open pro show, is a huge success, so congrats, Stanimal. Now, as far as this top two right here, I didn't see it this way. I didn't see Phil Kalhar winning, but yeah, he won this show somehow, and he's going to the Mr. Olympia. I mean, I wish him all the best, uh, he should go up there for a guy of his age, I mean, he's really doing well, but yeah, I don't see him beating Hassan. Those two poses really weren't showing much, not the best angle, but here in the most muscular, you can get the idea once again what is going on, I mean, check the, <laughs> check the difference in the freaking quads, in the legs. I mean, uh, literally like one leg of Hassan is the size of two legs of Phil Klahar. I mean, he completely is dwarfing him in the lag department, and um, I don't know, I, I just don't see how a guy with with these this small legs can beat somebody who is this massive, I mean, this is bodybuilding after all, and even though Hassan is not in great condition, he still looks much fresher, he's much younger, he has much bigger legs, he's just overall much bigger, and even though he's not as dry, as lean as Phil, you can still see crazy separation some, in some places, like in chest. So you can see like those deep cuts, you can see the fibers, uh, and everything is kind of blurred on Phil's physique because he's at that age. At that age, those things start to happen, which is normal. Again, he's doing really well for his age. I mean, he just won a pro show, and it is a close battle, but like I didn't see it this way. Back poses is where you could make an argument uh, of Phil winning, beating Hassan. Maybe his glutes were a little bit more conditioned. Maybe his back is a bit, a bit better. I mean, he's known for a back. He has a really good back. But then again, look at Hassan's back. Look at the, the, the muscularity. Look at the width. Even though he doesn't have the widest clavicles and Phil kind of does... He, Hassan is making up with the lat thickness, like those freaking lats are really massive, and yeah, again, the, the angle is definitely in favor of Hassan, but 
Personally, I like Hassan more here, even though his glutes aren't exactly super lean and yeah, Phil is showing more separation, more cuts in the glutes. I, overall, I just don't see it still. Even the back poses, I prefer Hassan. I don't know about back double, you're gonna see that one in a moment, but take a look at the front lat spread. <laughs> take a look at those things that I was mentioning before. Now, first of all, leg size, second of all, or put it in whichever order you want. Uh, the midsection, the way his midsection, the way their midsection are looking. Phil's midsection is not good. It's definitely not looking very good. Hassan, however, is having great control of that midsection and it just looks good. It looks nice. Even though he's a mass monster and he's packing a ton of muscle on his frame, he's not showing any distension, really. Uh, I mean, I heard... At the Toronto Pro, he was having a lot of problems with, with, with his stomach. Uh, he was showing some pretty bad distension, but not here, man. I don't see that. I think he's he's looking very tight. Look at the, look at the video as well. You can see everything clearly as well in the video. Uh, Hassan was controlling his midsection here much better than Toronto Pro. And once again, much, much bigger legs, much more fresh-looking physique. Overall, a lot more muscle on his frame. So yeah, uh, the only argument that I could see why Phil won is because he was a bit sharper and Hassan was off with conditioning. So if maybe maybe the judges are just uh, punishing Hassan for not really bringing it and uh, maybe he should just change coaches. I, I guess Chad can't really bring it. Seems like Chad can't get Hassan conditioned, shredded, like AJ Sims used to do. I mean, yeah, when working with AJ Sims, Hassan was smaller, flatter, but that conditioning just really paid off. I mean, he won two pro shows, and now he can't win a pro show, and he is losing to a 50-year-old Phil Klahar, who is obviously showing signs of aging. He's slowly melting away, he's losing body parts, and he's still able to beat Hassan, who should be at his prime right now, at the very best shape of his life. And, uh, I mean, he has everything aside from conditioning. Whatever Chad is doing with him, it's not working. I don't think Hassan is uh, cheating on his diet or anything like that. I believe he's a workhorse. Uh, whatever he did with AJ Sims last year worked. Maybe it was a bit too much. Maybe it was a bit too extreme for Hassan. He doesn't want to do it again that way. But, you know, it brought results. He can be second this year at so many shows. But if he wants to win... He needs to come and peel and do whatever it takes to get there. It truly is a shame. It's a pity for a guy this big to really not show his absolute best, to not come in condition, and to win these shows. Even though I believe he should have won this show the way he looked, I absolutely respect the judge's decision. And if it is the reason why he was second, uh, the fact that they wanted to punish him for not coming in in good condition, then yeah, I agree with that. Now, Hassan, I hope he's going to bring better conditioning for the next show and get that Olympic qualification. I'm sure he can do better than this. But yeah, it is what it is. As far as this show, Orlando Pro 2023 was won by Phil Klahar. And I don't want to sound rude, but let's be real. I mean, this guy is going to be only stage decoration, as Milos Archer would say, at the Olympia. Uh, he's not placing in that top 10 or top 16, whatever it is. Uh, if there is more than 16 guys, I'm pretty sure he's going to be one of, one of the last spots. Uh, he's, like, he's definitely not that caliber to be one of the top 15 in the world. He managed to pull a win here somehow. The lineup wasn't very deep. The only good bodybuilder aside from him was Hassan. Uh, the other guys, like uh, Stanimal, I mean, he just switched from classic, so... He's not big enough to really be competitive at the Olympia. Not yet. I'm sure in a couple of years he'll get there, but not right now. So it wasn't really a much of a much of a lineup, much of a show. Uh, and uh, Phil Kulhar ended up winning it. Uh, is he going to do some serious damage at the Olympia? No, no, no. Definitely not. But Hassan can, if he brings conditioning. So, 
yeah, I would love to see Hassan bring good conditioning and finally win a pro show this year and qualify for the Olympia. But it is what it is right now. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. And guys, if you want to support me and this channel, if you enjoy my content, you can support me by checking out the link in the caption of this video and trying any of the old school lab supplements. If you like something, go ahead, order it and make sure that you use the code EVAN, which will grant you 15% discount. And if you don't like the product, you can return it, but I'm telling you guys, whatever you try, you're gonna love it. They are the best quality on the market right now, one of the best for sure. I mean, they are just super high quality, you, there is no way you won't like it. So if you don't like it, you can replace it, you can get your money back, but I'm sure you won't do it, uh, because everything is so great. Once again, if you wanna support me, try whichever supplement you like, but make sure to use code EVAN. And that's gonna do it for this video, guys, if you enjoyed it, once again, like it. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.